Welcome to the conversation on the TYT Network. Um, now, all of you know about the tragedy that happened in Parkland. 17 people uh, massacred at a high school. Uh, now, we're going to show a movie called Parkland Rising a little bit later today uh, on this channel. So I want you to stay around and watch that because it's really powerful and important that you see that. But uh, one of the people featured in that movie is one of the fathers of uh, one of the well, students who were, was killed. Uh, that was Joaquin Oliver who was killed. Uh, and Manuel is in the movie, uh, that's because he's one of the, the toughest, strongest fighters um, fighting to get gun control in this country. And so uh, it's an honor to have him here. Uh, Manuel Oliver, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for the invitation, actually. Uh, no problem. I, I want to talk about the group that you started to fight back in just a minute. Uh, but first, uh, you know, as I'm sure you've done this a number of times, and I'm sure it's painful every time. Uh, but take us through um, your family's story of how you got here and then how that all changed on February 14, 2018. Uh, sure. We, we were born in Venezuela, uh, my wife, uh, my two kids, and myself. And um, 17 years ago, things were not um, painting very well in our country. And we decided to, to make the move and start again from scratch. Like, like most um, immigrants that come to this country with a lot of dreams and very little money and, and, and good intentions, okay? So we did everything by the book. We ended up being here. Uh, we moved to the city of Parkland, a, a beautiful city. And, um, and everything started the way it should start, uh, the way that we plan it. And um, nobody told me the risk side of making that move, um, which is my main role today, uh, warning people that things can happen. So um, a little more than two years ago, to to make a long story short and get to the point. I uh, left my son in his school. I went to my office like, like any other day, uh, living my American dream that it was true. And I got a phone call from my wife. She was in her office and, and she was told that there was an emergency uh, situation in Joaquin's school. I double checked, I started calling Joaquin he didn't answer the phone. I uh, got on my car, started driving to the school. The streets were blocked by the police. Uh, there was no access. I started looking with my wife from ER room to another ER room, running from one hospital to the other. Uh, and then a few hours later, around 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., uh, the FBI and Brower sheriff office uh, told us that Joaquin was one of 17 victims and that he was murdered. And, and then after that, I, I, I was able to find out that he was shot four times with an AR-15. When you were thinking about the American dream and moving from Venezuela to America, um, did anybody ever warn you about the gun violence in America and, and how uh, we led the world and that this country was an unsafe place to be? And now looking back at it, do you think, you know, Venezuela is in pretty bad shape right now and their problems are very visible and there's poverty. It's not just a uh, crime or violence issue, but that America would be less safe than Venezuela. Well, I don't, I don't, re let me start by saying that I don't regret uh, moving to the United States. My son was a very happy kid here. He, he, he fit perfectly in, in this country. He loved sports. Uh, the food, tradition, a lot of friends, the music, and, uh, and also me. I, I, I fit very well in here. However, uh, we have different um, kind of violence in Venezuela and the United States. And, and the first difference is that Venezuela is a third world country, full of corruption. Um, there is not a high level of education in, inside the population or most of the population. And, and uh, it's going through a lot of um, economic issues. Still, you feel that violence has a reason. Uh, if I'm robbed in Venezuela, kidnapped, I will end up thinking that the person or the group that directed that action 
had a reason to do it. And, and, and nobody will agree with that reason. The big difference in America is that uh, there is no reason for anyone to get into a school and start shooting kids randomly or to get into a nightclub in Orlando and just because you hate um, um, the gay community, you start killing them or get into a Walmart in El Paso and, and try to exterminate all uh, Mexicans or immigrants. So there is no explanation for what happens in the United States. And yes, no one told me that. Um, but besides that, I also ignored the fact that it was happening. And that is the only guilt that I have here. Not being able to react before February 14th and start sending a message when I knew that a few months before there was a shooting in the nightclub in Pulse in Orlando. And a few months before there was another massive shooting in Las Vegas. And I did nothing to prevent what happened in Parker. Manuel, that, that really leads to the central question here. Uh, what what can we do? Because as you've seen, you've now done everything possible. We'll talk about what you've done in a second. But um, the, you talked about corruption in Venezuela, which is absolutely true. Uh, but there's also massive corruption here in America. Uh, and so given that the NRA just simply has purchased the entire Republican Party, what on God's green earth can we do? Well, the first thing that we need to do is not beg and not ask, but demand. I think there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of reactions uh, these days out there. Uh, I think that tolerance has a limit, and we reached that limit. Um, and now I'm referring to the, the, um, the pandemic itself and, and all the numbers that that uh, crisis is bringing, the, the Black Lives Matter movement, and of course, the one movement that hasn't stopped since all this, which is the, the, the anti-gun violence groups. Um, we think that um, there is a big group of, of uh, young people, the youth that you see in this documentary, they have better plans for the country and they are already taking care that, that our politicians listen to what they want. Uh, so my hope is on them. What is it that we need to do? If you're a parent, you should support the ideas that your, your young kids are already cooking and working on. The new generation really concerns about important things. They are the ones that are going to save the planet. They are the ones that are concerned about how do we treat migrants or not. They are the ones about racism and gay rights. So there's another country ahead. And some people is just rejecting that from happening. But you can't reject that from happening. It's a social movement. And, and I, as much as I hate, hate the reason why I'm talking to you today, I feel proud that I am part of that new movement. That's actually uh, very powerful and, and I, a really hopeful message. And I think you're absolutely right about the essence of it. The younger generations culturally are very different than the older generations of Americans. Politically, ideologically, philosophically, culturally, they are very different. Totally. And so uh, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens when they take uh, charge electorally in this country. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't yet. Uh, so uh, you started an organization called Change the Ref. Um, First, before we even get into what you do, and I'm sure that it'll encompass in your first answer, but why did you name it Change the Ref? Hmm. Uh, my, my son, Joaquin, loved basketball, and I, I had the privilege of coaching his, his last, what, what became his last season. I have no idea about basketball at all. Hmm. And, and we were in this game, and he had an argument with the referee. I'm talking about two weeks before the shooting, okay? And um, he got in an argument. He asked me to deal with it. I, I had no idea how to react. I went to talk to the referee. And, and we were both thrown out of the game. So um, me and my son driving back home. And he, he comes to me and says that I think that that referee is somehow receiving money from the other teams. He doesn't like you. He doesn't like me. He doesn't like our players. And I'm just thinking, come on, dude. 
it, it's, it's a great argument from a 17-year-old kid that is pissed off because he just lost a game. But guess what? Um, and then he said, we need a fair game. And if we need a fair game, we need to change the ref. Two weeks later, he was shut down. And then I started looking at the news. And then I saw how our uh, referees in D.C., the ones that are supposed to make the right calls, they're not giving us a fair game. Why? Because one of the teams is giving them money. So the analogy of putting together all those thoughts and actually uh, bringing back what Joaquin was working on on that, on, on, on that day after our game and making the, the, the essence of our movement made perfect sense for us. So that's how we started Change the Ref, which means we need a, a, a better calls. We need uh, to change any rule that is not uh, giving us a fair game. Well, I love the name. That's why I asked. Uh, and that's what I thought was the reason why. Uh, and so uh, t tell, I want to talk a little bit about the politics of it in a second, too. But tell us what Change the Ref does day to day. What, what do you guys do? I'm an artist. Okay, I've been an artist my, for a great part of my life. Um, and I used to enjoy drawing and painting. I, I worked as a creative director in the music industry for a while. So my life today is not much different than what it was before. And, and I use all those skills along with my wife to empower the kids. We use art. We use theater. We use... Um, every resource that is related to a non-traditional way of, of delivering a message. Uh, we make statements from Joaquin, directly from Joaquin. We fight along with Joaquin. We, we think that Joaquin is an activist. If you ask me randomly if I'm the father of a victim, I will say, no, I'm the father of an activist that happens to be a victim. So we are trying to continue with our parenting role, number one. I refuse to stop being a father. And, and what I do keeps me that energy of waking up in the morning and doing something along with my son. Could be a mural, could be a speech, could be an event. So the bottom line is that we are with the kids um, hand to hand. We respect what they do. We never underestimate their power. And we can do, we will do anything that it's in our um, um, capacity to make that message uh, stronger and louder. How can people help change the ref? You can join um, what we do by um, accessing our social media. Of course, everything that we do, that, that there was a lot of traveling before the COVID. And now there's a lot of online um, events. You can make donations. You can you can purchase um, um, what I call um, activism gear from our store. Uh, we work a lot on the creative side um, and and the creative industry. So I would say that uh, join us to expand our our ideas and and campaigns. It's it's more than enough. And if you want to make a donation, even better changeref.org and obviously shows you how to volunteer and get involved too. A lot of groups uh, and, and parents and people involved in tragedies try to stay nonpartisan, partly because that's there's some uh, unwritten rule about that and the media gets mad at you if you get partisan, which I don't think they have any right to get mad at any parent for anything, uh, but that's usually the tenor that they take. Uh, and then you also want to affect both parties to affect change. But in this case, the differences are so stark. Uh, some Democrats used to take money from the NRA. That's almost completely gone now. And, and the Republican Party uh, is almost completely bought by the NRA. Uh, and certainly President Trump is, uh, Mitch McConnell is. They're the ones blocking gun control, all gun control. Now, but it's just so the audience knows, 97% of Americans want federal background checks. And we don't have them. That means we don't live in a democracy. Uh, the two people that are blocking that uh, the most are Mitch McConnell and, and Donald Trump. And Donald Trump has said flat out, I, I'm doing it because I met with the head of the NRA and he's a big donor of mine. And so I'm not going to do it. Um, he, I mean, he's unintelligent enough to have actually said that out loud. So is it clear in this case who the bad guys are politically? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, I, I didn't belong to any party before any of these happened. Uh, I was not involved 
in, in the political point of view or political issue. And then I started learning things. But, but, but hear me out here. Th that will change. You said something that is true. Uh, most of the Democratic uh, politicians are not um, engaged in any way with the NRA. And, and a lot of the, the Republican uh, Party politicians are, uh, mostly because of the NRA. And, and the same way that Democrats are not, the Republicans at some point will not be engaged with the NRA. And the reason for that is that it's not cool. And, and this is what I want you to picture in your head for a minute. Imagine someone running for Senate on November, endorsed by the tobacco industry. That guy has no chance. Why? Because we decided that he wouldn't have a chance. We decided as a society that smoking tobacco will not only kill you, but also bother me. Um, and then we created a lot of laws that will somehow slow down the industry. And, and they don't have not even 10% of the power that they had before, not so long ago, by the way. So not being cool is important for the young generation that is choosing the leaders. And, and that's why I think that the NRA has really, as much as I want that to happen, if I turn away and pretend that I'm not me, I also see it happening. I see the NRA running out of gas because it's not cool. Gun culture cannot be the culture that identifies a country. And, and if that's the case, then we need to change it because it's a real emergency. So we are well known as a country that has more weapons than people. And we call ourselves the most powerful nation in the whole world. Someone is lying here and I'm not. NRA has its days counted. It's not cool and no one at some point will elect anyone endorsed by the gun industry. I mean, from your mouth to God's ears, I hope to, uh, to God that's true. Uh, the only difference is that when the tobacco industry started reeling, uh, money had not completely taken over politics yet. That's a complicated discussion as to how the Supreme Court ruled uh, in 76 and 78 uh, to allow corporations to spend unlimited money. I think if tobacco's problems started today, they'd easily buy the Republican Party and they'd easily fend off the problems that they had. Um, yeah, so now having said that, I, I generally agree with you on, on the prospect of a hopeful future. And I agree with you on uh, the current state, which is a very bleak present, um, uh, where with very little hope for change. Um, so help me build a bridge. Uh, what has to happen between now and that hopeful future for us to actually win? What does winning look like and how do we get that done? Well, I think it's, and, and, and again, call me naive, but I think there is a whole organic um, situation already going on. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of anger on, on society. You see people out there speaking louder than a few years ago. When it comes to gun violence, you wouldn't have these uh, debates so open before the Portland shooting. It's true. I'm not, I'm not making that up. It's true. So I think that it's already happening. Um, it's not that it will happen. It's already happening. And the bridge is we're starting to build it with with more um, with getting getting the youth more involved into making the right decisions, taking the right route. I think that again the elections in November are uh, so important, and and a lot of things will change if if we do the right thing, uh, which is not other than do our homework and and see who is behind each of the candidates, and then vote for the good guy. The universal good guy. There's, I mean, it's not so hard to find who's who's acting in a bad way or in a good way when it comes to gun violence. This is about saving lives, okay? Um, when I use the term gun control, uh, half of the audience moves away. This is about saving lives, and that's that that encounter, that that common ground that we need to keep on fighting on. The the NRA member that is watching this right now. He has kids, and he should be concerned about his kids and the safety and, and where are your guns and, and what are the steps that we should 
take together to protect your kids. It's my kid. I got news for you. He's not here anymore. So there is no way for me to keep protecting him. Manuel, this is not a policy or a political uh, question, and uh, I'm uh, a little afraid to ask it, but I'm genuinely curious. Um, does it ever get any better? There's mixed feelings, okay? And I think that every everyone reacts in a different way, and we all have the right to react in a different way. Uh, as I told you, I'm an artist, so I like to express myself. And every time I express myself using art, I feel better. I, I have less toxic inside. And in this particular case, I love uh, sharing uh, stories of my son, um, drawings of my son, because as I told you before, it's the only way that I feel that I'm still his dad. Uh, if I keep on that track, if I wake up in the morning feeling that, yes, I am doing this along with Joaquin, I can tell you that I feel a little less worse, which is not feeling better. Um, am I going to be happy someday? I don't even know. I, I, I do know that I'm going to do this to my last day. This is my new plan for retirement being an activist against gun violence. I think I did the best I could not to uh, cry during the interview. Um, <laughs> and um, Manuel, I, I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate what you're doing to try to make sure that other kids uh, are safe in this country. Um, and we all have kids and, and we appreciate your hard work on, on their behalf. Uh, so you. please, everybody, check out changetheref.org. And uh, also check out uh, the award-winning movie, Park on Rising, that Manuel's in. We're going to show that to you in about uh, just about an hour. We'll have the Young Turks next uh, and then um, Park on Rising. Manuel Oliver, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.